Well, for the past year now, from behind bars, Philia has been busy writing a story some never thought they'd get to hear. But now, through correspondence with our Ashley Yarkin, we bring you this exclusive report from Beaufort County. Ashley? Well, JR, first I'd like to say that I have spoken with the victim and her family, and they're doing well, just looking forward to putting all of this behind them. As for my correspondence with Philia, they are aware of it and ask that I not air anything until today. Now, all of this began when Philia was assigned an attorney. I called him, offering to give his client a chance to speak. In response, he told Philia of my interest, and that's when I started receiving his writings. Now, with five letters and one very detailed manuscript, we have a better understanding of what Philia says really happened last September. I remembered seeing one of the girls from the high school bus go up to a wooded driveway. That's when I started thinking if I could make my way through the woods to her house, I could abduct her from there. Chapter 8, page 2, 48 hours before officials say Vincent Philia would carry out that plan. This is his manuscript, a detailed description of the 10 days that terrified a community. I was prepared for battle now and had all intentions of starting a war. I actually felt guilty for what I knew she was fixing to endure. Wednesday, September 6, 2006, 4.30 p.m. Vilya writes that he was dressed as a deputy when he handcuffed and kidnapped his victim as she walked from her bus stop towards her front door. She went where I told her. I wanted her to stay calm, so I told her my sergeant was waiting to talk to her. I placed a necklace around her neck. She asked me what it was for. I explained to her that the small black box on it was an explosive. I then told her that she was being kidnapped and that if she did anything stupid, I would blow her up. Sounds like an admission, so you have to wonder, did Phil Yahoo pleaded not guilty really write all of this? I would say that I'm somewhere near... 90 to 95 percent sure that he did this. Charles Parada has been examining handwriting samples for more than three decades. The former FBI forensic investigator compared Filia's signatures on two court documents with those on three letters he sent to News 19. Parada says similarities showed up in strokes, letter size, spacing, and the degree of slant. I saw numerous handwriting characteristics in common which lead me to the conclusion that it is more likely than not that Phil Yaw did prepare each of the question signatures in this case. I've instructed someone to send you a copy of the book. It is the complete book, however, it is the unfinished, unedited version. This is the last letter we received, and as explained, the book followed. Chapter 8, page 3. I told her that I intended to rape her. She immediately looked frightened. I told her as long as she did what I told her, I would not hurt her. That afternoon, Philia says he led his young hostage less than a mile into the woods to this underground bunker. Ten feet wide, eight feet deep, and 20 feet long. This is where they found refuge. She sat there listening to me, then quietly asked me when she would be able to go home. She just seemed to be such a really sweet girl that I hated to tell her the truth. So I lied to her and said, soon, real soon. But the truth he did tell her was why she was now his hostage. He explains in this letter that during an investigation of accusations that he sexually assaulted his 12-year-old stepdaughter, the sheriff's deputy had no intention of hearing his side of the story. I did what I did without admitting to anything yet to show Kershaw County I can play as dirty as they can. Also to show the public how incompetent and corrupt they really are. Family and friends of a missing teenager are gathering in Lugoff. Now, side. Sheriff McCaskill says officers will continue to search those. Philia says that when deputies deemed the missing girl a runaway, he had won. My hostage, however, became more depressed because now she knew nobody was looking for her. As days passed, he wrote that the two fell into a routine, leaving the bunker daily to clean clothes, collect water, and converse. But beyond the first day, rape was never mentioned as part of that plan. She told me she was bored and asked if she could play on my cell phone. I thought about it for a moment. She had done good outside, and I knew the phone didn't work inside the bunker, so I finally agreed. It was a week after the girl's kidnapping when Philia's kindness revealed the route to her escape.
After a year of careful, meticulous planning, I had let her win. I literally gave her the phone to call the police. It was as simple as that. I couldn't be mad at her. She had done what any person in her situation would have done and probably better. She had won my trust and defeated me. Investigators say the girl actually sent a text message to her mother, which led officials to this mining yard, where an all-night search forced Philia to get going. I had really grown fond of my hostage, and I had hoped to keep her, but as they say, all good things must come to an end. Besides, it was what I planned all along. I grabbed my backpack and rifle and opened the door. Hours later, the girl was rescued. That as Philia hiked his way past police down Spears Creek Church Road towards I-20, where he says he surrendered. If I gave up, I would have full medical coverage, three meals a day, and never have to work again. I stood there for a minute thinking. Then I lit a cigarette and walked over to the side of the interstate. I had made my decision. Chapter 9, page 4, it was around 4.30 Sunday morning. The then 46-year-old was finally out of the woods, handcuffed and hauled off to jail, where time to tell his story would be seemingly endless. Phil Yaw's attorney would not comment on the writings, neither would the solicitor, the victim's family, or the sheriff. But, of course, we'll see all of them back here at the Beaufort County Courthouse tomorrow morning at 9.30. J.R.? Ashley, the victim and her family, I take it, are there for this trial, correct? That is correct. Now, what about uh, the defendant, uh, Vince, Vincent Filia? Does he have any family members present? His mother, Ginger Cobb, is here, and you may remember she was arrested initially in this case. Um, Deputy said she was trying to bring him goods to allow him to sustain life in the woods, but uh, she has not been prosecuted on those charges.